You, you mentioned um, health care, and I guess Senate Bill 88 has passed. That, that's one of the things that happened this last uh, session. And that's to design sort of a three op. I get put a, put a commission yeah. together again and put three options on the table, um, one of which needs to be single. Is that, is that correct? And the, what's the history yeah. of 88? That's, I'm, a, I'm the only person there. running for governor who has sponsored every single single-payer health care bill that's ever been introduced as long as I've been in a legislature. I just think that the other countries have figured out how to get it done, that insurance companies don't do anything to improve your health, and that if we don't use technology to save costs in an integrated system, we're going to be bankrupt. We will not be able to afford an additional million dollars every single day. It's killing businesses and it's killing Vermonters' pocketbooks. So what S88 said was, let's basically outline some principles to get to the system that I just outlined, and then let's hire someone to actually do the design, the architecture, so that the next governor can say, this is how exactly how it would work, these are our options, this is what it would cost, this is how we'd pay for it, and this is the delivery system that you have in place, and this is the money that you'd save. No one's ever done that work. So I got a hold of a guy named Dr. Shao from Harvard uh, this winter. And he's designed systems all over the world. He, he's at the, the medical school and, and at Harvard uh, Med. And he has a whole bunch of graduate students that do a lot of his research. And he designed the system in Taiwan. He's designed the system in Vietnam, all over the world. And I said to him, we'd love to have someone like you design a system for Vermont. And he said, Peter, I gave up on America 25 <laughs> years ago when I was working for Congress doing this work and nothing ever happened. And he said, he said just what just happened with, with the federal bill, he said between the pharmaceutical companies, the insurance companies, and all the other special interests that all get in your dollars, lucky you can't get, get anything done right, in America. Right, yeah. Anyway, I convinced him that Vermont was different, which we are. <clears throat> and uh, we have hired him to do the work. The next governor is going to have Dr. Shaw, we just hired him last week, uh, and his graduate students to actually put the meats on the bones. Now, to answer your question about the bill, when it came out of the Health and Welfare Committee in the Senate, chaired by Doug Racine, somehow it came out as three studies. And the other flaw was, I was going to appoint someone to this board or commission. The speaker got one appointment, and the governor got two. Now, if you're a governor who's anti-change, which, you know, frankly, and Jim leaving. Douglas has right, been about right. health care, you'd appoint your two people and you'd say, hey, here's your job. Go in there, sit in this commission, just make sure that nothing comes out that resembles any kind of un integrated single-payer health care plan. So that didn't make much sense. So when it got voted out of Senator Racine's committee, a whole bunch of us fixed it in appropriations. What we couldn't get rid of was the three studies. I personally think the three studies is sort of foolish. We should do one architectural plan. Mm -hmm. But anyway, S88 calls for three, and that's what Dr. Shaw will have to design. Right. Are they even designated one needs to be public one option, has to be one public needs to option. be... Uh, one has, to, it, one has to be public option, the other two are open. Okay, so public option may or may not become single payer even in that we'll framework, see. is that right? Okay, we'll see. Uh, that's helpful. Actually, I um, just learn um, about your positions on Green Mountain Daily because you post there, you, you've engaged right. the blogosphere. Yeah. And um, I'm wondering uh, how your campaign is looking at uh, the internet, sort of the virtual campaign. Um, as, uh, as a place to uh, get your message out? Well, you know, it's, um, it's a critical part of any campaign now, from fundraising to getting a message out to, most importantly, in this kind of effort that we're all in. I mean, let's look at what we're doing here. We have a five-way Democratic primary. And if you assume that there's going to be about 60,000 people that vote, which is probably, you know, let's say 50 to 70,000, uh, you know, you only need 15, one of us needs 15, 18, 20,000 votes to win. So what, well, the way that the internet can, the, that the blogosphere can be tremendously helpful is by connecting with voters, uh, keeping in touch with them for a very low cost, mm -hmm. and getting them to the polls, or getting them to vote early, which is what we're all trying to do. Right. Now don't forget, you can start voting on July 12th, and vote for, you have 45 days to vote from July 12th to August 25th. That's a huge window. So we're all gonna be using everything in our power, electronically, to engage, get them to commit, and get them to vote. So early voting is go to your town clerk and pick up yeah. a piece of paper? And Just go into the town clerk's office. You know, everyone thinks, early voting, I need an excuse. I need a note from my doctor. <laughs> That's the way it used to be. I'm overseas, right? right? You used to have to call me your doctor and say, I have a sore throat. Can you get me permission to vote? Any Vermonter, starting on July 12, can go in, 
register, and if you're not registered, register, obviously. Right. Uh, but just go in and vote. Just say, hey, I want to vote today. No one's going to ask you why. Just go do it. Okay. Get it done. And you know, I think about my own family. I, I, if I weren't, we're not running for governor, we happen because of the way my business schedule works and the fact that all our summer programs come back the second week in August. Mm -hmm. For as long as I've been around, we go up to Nova Scotia with the family for two weeks at the end of August. There is no way that Pete Shumlin would have been here on August 25 if he wasn't running for governor. Mm -hmm. So it's so great that I can go out and start voting on July 12. And I bet there's a lot of Vermonters in that category. Right, right. Um, in terms also of the, of the uh, internet, I'm asking uh, each candidate if they would uh, pledge not to use any anonymous tactics on the internet. Just looking, uh, I'm really just kicking Rich Tarrant around from the, his yeah. old six-cent <laughs> campaign. He put up this Vermont uh, SenateRace.com website and kind of, it was apparently objective and slowly used it to right. uh, make hay about Bernie and uh, you won't see us. It doesn't you, fly you, you in Vermont very well, but... We're, you know, we're running a very ethical campaign. I think the other Democrats are, too, and that's the way it should be. Right. The beauty of Vermont democracy is that we don't play games like that. Yeah. And if you do, you get slapped. And that's if you don't believe me, somewhere, ask Rich here. Tarrant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He learned the hard way. Yeah. Um, your website is put together by a, a Vermont company. It's, a, I think it's, it's put together by a Vermont... Vermonter. Uh-huh. Yeah. And a bunch of Vermonters, but it's a Northeast Kingdom. Great. Great. Um, as We're a pretty homespun operation. <laughs> as uh, as uh, Senate President, um, you've been really on the, uh, I guess, the roller coaster of the, of the last two sessions, the biennium. Um, and I'm just wondering, uh, the, the first session ended in uh, a big, two big vetoes, uh, marriage equality and the budget and veto overrides. Um, and the tenor and tone of the second um, sessions uh, seemed a lot different. I'm just wondering that, wouldn't mind a little compare and contrast from your perspective of yeah. uh, on those, uh, the two sessions there. You know, you have to remember that I was at a, I was Senate President, I'm the longest serving Democratic Senate President in Vermont history. I did six years as Senate President, had four years off, was frankly not planning to come back to politics and I won't bore you with the story, but the person <laughs> that I recruited died of cancer, a wonderful guy named Rod uh -huh. Gander, uh, right around and he asked me to go back, and I did. And I was going to stay two years, I stayed four. But they made me Senate President right away, which was That's your peers elect you, right? Right, your yeah. peers elect you. And that was a real honor. I mean, they've never taken someone off the streets who hasn't been in the building <laughs> four years and said, hey, we want to make this happen. But that's just the way it worked out. Um, I think you have to remember what the environment was when I came back to the Senate as a Democrat. Uh, there had been, it was Douglas's first four, two terms, first four years. Uh, they'd worked together on a lot of issues. Uh, frankly, I call it nothing but a love fest for Energy Louisiana. There was uh, no question that they were going to get relicensed. In mm -hmm. fact, everyone was so confident that they'd passed a bill in those four years saying the legislature gets to vote on continuing operation of the plant, and Energy endorsed the bill, and the governor signed it because everyone was so sure all of those that wanted right. to relicense that old deal. nuclear plant, it was a done deal. Yeah, yeah. So I came back to an environment where, first of all, I wasn't very well known. Half my colleagues didn't know me, so that was a, an issue. Uh, the other part was... So that's was, pretty good turnover. That's actually... That's yeah, a it is. Sign no, it is. That's right. Absolutely. Here. And that's a good thing. <laughs> now, that's one reason I'm leaving the Senate and hoping to <laughs> move to higher ground. But if I don't, you know, I won't be back in the Senate. And that's a good thing. Uh, change is good in Vermont democracy. But my point is, I came into a situation where I had deep doubts about energy. Uh, I had deep doubts about the incremental approach that the governor and the Democratic legislature had made on health care. Frankly, everyone loves Catamount. I just didn't think it was financially sustainable and therefore wise. Uh, and I walked into a, an environment where it wasn't okay to, for Democrats, frankly, to stand up and say, hey, I disagree. So I started doing that, and people had mixed feelings about it. Uh, but the result was that, uh, you know, last year, as an example, we overrode the governor's budget veto. We passed marriage equality. I felt very strongly about marriage equality. Now, if you think there were Democrats lining up outside the Senate President's office saying, hey, you know, Mr. President, could we vote on marriage equality this year? You know, guess again. But I had watched Barack Obama get elected President of the United States, coming from the whitest state in the country. Mm -hmm. I can remember when I saw the first African American growing up in rural Vermont, southeast si uh, side, when I was a kid, sure. I was—I think I was six or seven years old. I just—we had no diversity in this right, state. Right, right. And they probably I, weren't on television then, because no, we didn't have TV. You <laughs> couldn't. We don't even have internet in Putney now. 
But anyway, the point is, uh, it was an extraordinarily proud moment to see that glass ceiling broken. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah. And on the same television, I was watching the faces of the families in California that because of Proposition 8, had had their rights taken yeah. away from them. Oh, yeah. Not just not given to them, but taken away right. after they declared their love for each other for the rest of their lives. You know, and I said, this little Senate president from Vermont, you know, I could actually do something about that. So we went up and a bunch of us worked together and we introduced the bill and we passed it in the Senate on a 26 to 4 bipartisan sure. vote for marriage equality, yeah. can you imagine? Shap Smith, the speaker, did an extraordinary job in the House. Lots of people worked hard. The governor vetoed it. And we overrode them. Now, if I said to you, Michael, we're going to go up there and pass marriage equality, the governor's going to veto it, and we're going to override that veto, you would have said, you know, come on, Sharmone, let's talk <laughs> logic here. 